Well, hey, good morning. I, uh, I love that passage that we read there in Isaiah chapter 9 and uh, just that whole kind of prophetic message that Isaiah is, is sending to the people of Israel and really the context of that is just so important because actually what we see here is that we, we have a, a nation, Israel, that really are finding themselves in, in a place of distress and darkness. And in this moment, the, the prophet Isaiah is declaring a a kind of new future, a preferred way, something new that's going to breathe life back into them. In fact, you know, even just this kind of whole thing that actually, you know, the, for, to us a son is born, a child is given, is actually going to breathe and release them into a, a kind of brighter, a more beautiful future. And, 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 and even this kind of whole thing that it's going to be bigger than Israel, that what, what the Lord wants to do, what God the Father wants to do, is actually not just going to restore Israel, it's not just going to kind of bring about change, and significant transformation there. But this is for the whole world. This is going to set the whole world to rights. And right at the very heart, right at the very center of this preferred future, um, we find it's about the advent, the arrival of a baby named um, Jesus. And he says, for to us a child is born, a son is, is given. And, and in God's answer then, I love this, God's answer then, just as it, as it was you know, many centuries ago, just as it is now, to everything remains exactly the same, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, as we think about going into a new year, the answer to that new year is Jesus. The answer to everything you're walking through right now is, is Jesus. And just as it was all these centuries ago, as he prophetically wrote those words to the people of Israel, you know, to you and I today, they have the same profound impact on each of our lives. And so, Isaiah here, he, he gives us um, four names, um, incredible names, about the Messiah to come, about the son that's to be born. He calls him Mighty God. He's Wonderful Counselor. He's Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And, and this morning, I want to just dive, if you like, into the second one that we see, Mighty God. I want us just to kind of focus in on that because that's a bold name, isn't it? Mighty God. <laughs> you know, that's a bold, bold name to, to you know, that's some birth announcement. He's mighty God. In fact, actually, when you dig a little bit deeper into that name, the original Hebrew kind of word that we get here, or name that we get is El Gabor. Two words, El Gabor. And, um, and, and actually, when you, I love this because some commentators around this actually begin to define it and translate El Gabor, we have mighty God, but actually say a, a better translation is hero God. Don't you just love that? Hero God. And some of the virtues of this kind of hero God that's to come is that he's going to be a ruler. And, you know, he says he's going to rule governments. And we thank the Lord for that, right? But he's going to be a ruler. and He's going to rule with strength and with wisdom. And, you know, we, you know, we're used to people in authority and we we hope they have wisdom. We, we see some measures of strength. But actually, this child to come, this advent, this arrival of the Son, Jesus Christ, is going to rule. He's going to have wisdom. He's going to have strength in superhuman measure. Like this is going to be something we've never seen before. In fact, we've never seen it before. We're never going to see anyone like it again because it was Jesus, the Son of God, who was going to come to planet earth and 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 you know for every single one of us you know there will be a record of our birth you know you can some of you will have um, the documentation your birth certificate you'll be able to say you'll be able to dig that out find it and and on there will be some important details right there'll be perhaps you know well there'll be your name they'll there'll be the day that you were born there'll be the weight and um, what you weighed when you were born there'll be other information like your parents names where you were born kind of important details that we that we will look at and use to for, as, inf as information. I, I don't imagine for every single, any single one of us that, you know, we've got mighty God on our birth certificate or wonderful counsel or prince of peace. That would be some birth certificate if you did, but I imagine none of us have that. But yet here, if you like the important document, the important kind of information we need to know, Isaiah is telling us, hey, he's going to be wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father. And scripture is filled, chapters and verses are filled with evidence that points to the fact that he is those things, that actually these names match who he, who he is. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, he says in chapter 32, he says, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens, you made the earth by your great power. And then he makes this really bold, significant statement. He says, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. 
And I want us to really just grab hold of that as we think about the year we've had, about the year, you know, that we're believing for and the new opportunities of a new year as we begin to think about those things. You know, just know that today nothing is too hard for God. There is nothing that is beyond him. In fact, the, um, the, the kind of disciple John in his book, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there, John chapter 1. I want to just read a few verses to you here because he, he, he kind of walked with Jesus. He stood shoulder to shoulder with Jesus and there were some things that he began to understand. And in the very familiar kind of words of John um, chapter 1, just a few verses here, 1 to 3, he says this. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he says, he was with God in the beginning. Then listen to this, verse 3. He says, through him all things were made. Let me say that again. Through him all things were made. There is, you know, the, 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 there, has, there has all things, without him, nothing was made that has been made. That there was nothing that was outside of his, his, his kind of, his control, if you like. Nothing that was outside of his creation. Everything was made through him, by him, and, and for him. And I just, you know, find that incredible. And actually what it begins to unravel to us is this picture of mighty God. It screams to us that he was a mighty God. Jesus Christ, who became flesh, made his dwelling amongst us. Everything that we celebrate in this season that we find ourselves in, that he dwelt amongst us, he taught us, he healed us, he loved us, he, he died on the cross for us. And after all, all of that, he was creating the universe. Before all of those things, before he loved us, taught us, healed us, you know, did any of those things, he was creating the universe. He is sovereign God. He is a mighty, mighty God. There is nothing that is too hard for him. And, you know, we think of that because, you know, all of us, none of us have escaped this, but we've all walked some things this year. There have been some happenings, things that we've not been able to control, the things that have been outside of our comfort zones as well. But you see, no matter how hard it's got, no matter how bleak, no matter how much distress they may see or how much darkness has come, there has been nothing that has been too hard for God. He is a mighty God. He is all-powerful all knowing he asks who he is and no matter where you are you know you maybe right now you feel like well in this time of my life or the season I'm in I've never felt further away from God I want to say no matter where you find yourself the Holy Spirit he is with you Emmanuel God with us he you are with him and he you can be with he is with you and you see, he knows our thoughts. He, he knows our heart. He knows our, our minds, everything about us. He knows those things. And he can accomplish what he wants to accomplish in your life. There is nothing that's too hard for him, nothing that is beyond him. And yet, as we look at the world, as we survey the, the communities we live in, the streets that we're in, as we look around the nations around us and we see so much, we see darkness. We see distress. We don't have to look too far to see any of those things. We, we hear more reports around COVID-19. We, we get, you know, different reports on, or, or, you know, maybe even you've had a health report and cancer has come or, or miscarriage or loneliness, bankruptcy, death. You know, we've had to deal with some things, unthinkable tragedies that we've had to walk with and deal with. And perhaps in the midst of that, we've kind of scratched our heads and thought, God, where are you? Where's the evidence of your power? Where's the evidence of your mighty hand at work in our nation, in our lives? Maybe, you know, even at this time of year, you find yourself, your anxiety levels are through the roof. Stress levels are out of control. And you're thinking maybe like Christmas has just added to all of those things. We're wondering, God, where are you? Where's your mighty hand at work? And I want to just say and encourage you, if this is you, I want to assure you today, I want to just remind you and encourage you today and pray that you can move to a place of faith that means that you can say with confidence that God is working, that his power and his might are real and they are evidenced in my life. And I want to just take a bit of time really, I want to just encourage you and really remind you if you like, none of these things are particularly new, but I actually feel stirred to remind you today about three specific things. As we transition from one year to another, as we think about everything that's been and begin to prepare our hearts for that which is to come in the days that lie ahead of us, I want to remind you about three things to remind you and encourage you today. Number one, God is working in you. God is working in you. I wonder how many of us have 
been guilty in the past, maybe, you know, when you made that decision of faith or, you know, even just as you journey through faith and we've kind of been guilty of thinking, you know, if I follow Jesus, life's going to be easy. I'm going to have it sorted and it'll all work out. And, you know, I'm going to be easy street from here because I know Jesus. I mean, like if that, if you've heard that and that's the gospel you've been preached, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's the wrong gospel. That's not the gospel that I, I know, you see, because even Jesus in John 16, 33, he gathers his disciples and he says, hey, you know, folks, come on, prepare yourselves here because in this world, you're going to have trouble. In this world, there's going to be trouble. But so kind of prepare yourselves, guard your heart, be, be, take heart because I've overcome the world. And so Jesus begins to prepare them and says, look, trouble's going to come. You know, just, you know, following Jesus doesn't mean that we avoid pain. It doesn't mean we avoid distress. It means we have someone with us in those things. And you see, Jesus is working. God is working in your life. But can I, let me be honest, he's not going to give you this weekend's lorry numbers. I'm sorry to disappoint you. He won't do that. Because you see, his power is not something that's to be yielded or utilized for us to have an easy life. That's not the purpose of his power. In fact, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, he said, It is God who works in you, listen to this, to will and to act according to your purpose. According to my purpose? No. According to his good purpose. And so he's, he's working in you, but his working in you, his might, his power, his, his majesty, hero God is working in you according to his will and his good purpose. But what's he, what's he wanting to do? Well, the, you know, it's clear to us that actually the, the, the kind of goal, the big thing that God wants to do in your life and through my life is that he wants to get us more into the likeness of Jesus, his son. That every day he wants to transform us more into the likeness of his son. In 2021, the goal in the heart of the Father is that you'll be more like Jesus than you were in 2020. Come on. That's the heart of the Father, to transform us more into the likeness of his son. To move us from self-centeredness to others' focus. To move us from unfruitfulness to fruitfulness in our lives. That his power, his might are all leveraged to this one thing. And church, I get it because it's so easy for every one of us to fall into the comparison trap, isn't it? Or is it just me? We fall into this comparison trap. We start looking and surveying others around us. And we're looking and we're, we're kind of saying, well, God, why are they getting the breaks, the blessings? Why are they getting the, the breakthroughs in their life? And God, can't you just do what you're doing in their life, in my life? And we begin to look around. And I get it. But I want to remind you today that God is working in your life. He is working in you. Be assured today. Number one, he's working in you. Number two, God is working for you. Looking back over my life, I've lost count of the number of times when I've looked back and over a period of time been able to see God's hand working in my life, working um, for me. Times when I've been at my lowest points, on my knees, and I've looked back and discovered him working in some of the most profound ways, ways that I couldn't even begin to imagine when I was in that moment. But you look back and you see his hand at work, his power and his might working for my life. The prophet Isaiah, and you go forward a few chapters from Isaiah 9, you get to Isaiah 40. And in Isaiah 40, I love this because it says this, it said, God gives, God gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, young men stumble, fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run. They will not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. What's Isaiah trying to say to you? He's trying to remind us and say to every single one of us, hey, even the best of us get weary. Even the best of us get tired. Even the best of us need a day off. Even the best of us need a break. Even the best of us need to address some rhythms and some, some habits and some priorities in our lives. And all those things are good, but listen what he says here. He says, it's those who hope in the Lord whose strength will be renewed. Take a day off, address your priorities, look at your habits, do all those things. But remember, it's those who hope in the Lord whose strength will be renewed. You know, this is mighty God, hero God, Jesus, who promises to strengthen you today. He's working for you to strengthen you, and he increases the power of the weak. He is working not only in you, but he is working for you. Number three, finally, I want to remind you of this today, is that God is working through you. God is working through you. Over this Christmas season, often we are unraveling a familiar story again. 
trying to understand. And we, we, we journey through the life of Mary, this 12, 13, 14 year old, year, young, year old girl who really, quite frankly, was given a, a, an insane and simply terrifying um, kind of um, purpose and, and, and news from the angel that she was going to miraculously, supernaturally conceive this, this baby who's going to be the son of God. And in this moment as she receives the news from the angel, I want to just look at her response. You got it, by turn to Luke 1, 38. Luke 1, 38, and we see here how she responds to this insane, terrifying news. 12-year-old girl, she says this. She says, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Luke 1, 38. Amazing. I wonder how you would respond to the news that she receives. I, I'm not sure I could respond with quite the same humility. The humility that's on display here is incredible. Amazing. Her response was to say, you know, because her response was to say, I'm the Lord's servant. But you see, Mary would have known some things. <laughs> Mary would have known that actually very few people, maybe even within her own family, would have believed her. She would have known that actually this news would have had perhaps even disastrous, devastating consequences for her fiancé, her husband-to-be, Joseph. But yet she trusted God and she believed him and she made herself available to him to be used by him for his work according to his good purpose. She knew that well, she wouldn't have been equipped. She was a young girl, a teenage girl. She knew that she wouldn't have been equipped for the call that God gave her. But yet in this moment, you see, she, she surrendered her life. You know, I reckon it had been so easy for her to step back and hide in the shadows, but she didn't. She simply responded to the Lord and said, I'm your servant. And I wonder for how many of us when, you know, when we've been called and asked to do something or the Lord has given us something or maybe those in some sort of leadership over us have asked us to step out and the first thing was like, I'm not capable, I'm not equipped. You see, God doesn't always call the equipped. He does use the equipped, but he equips those he calls. And he called this young girl to step out and her response was beautiful, humble, I'm the Lord's servant. Church, I, I believe that this is all the Lord wants and desires and needs from us in order to accomplish His wonders in our lives and through the lives of others and into the lives of others. He doesn't need highly skilled, extremely skilled, super qualified geniuses. He does, he does use skilled people. He does use highly resourced, capable people for sure. But you see, His track record is He uses untrained fishermen. He uses poor widows. He uses outcasts, those who are on the, the margins of society. That He pulls them in and He gives them a call. And what He's looking at from you and from me is people that are available. He's looking for humility, availability, willingness. Because you see, church, I, I believe that it's not about what you can do, but what you'll allow Him to do in and through you. As we prepare our hearts for a new year, Actually, may, our, may the virtues, may the hallmarks of our life and our faith be a humility, availability and a willingness to reply just like Mary replied. I am your servant. May your word to me be according to that which you have said, that may it be fulfilled. See, I, the Lord blesses those who declare I am the Lord's servant. And we all have a part to play. We all have a part to play in that. And maybe right now, even just in these few moments, why don't you close your eyes? And let's just ask the Holy Spirit just to come right now in these few moments. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We thank you for your word to us. We thank you that just that reminder today, Father, that you are the God who's working in us, that you are the God who's working for us, and you are the God who's working through us. We thank you for the truth and the reminder of that today. And Lord, even in those moments when we felt like we've been far from you, Father, thank you that you've still been working and using your power and your might according to your good purpose to bring about your plan in our life and through our lives. Thank you, Father. And Lord, right now, as we prepare our hearts to move and transition from one year to another, Lord, we reply and we say we are your servants. We are your people. May your word be fulfilled to us just as you said it would be. 
And Lord, we prophetically speak right now over our hearts and over the church and our church and our community and, and the place in which we live. And we say, Father, in 2021, may your word be fulfilled to us according to your purpose. May you do what you want to do. May the kingdom agenda for our hearts, for our homes, for the town in which we live, for our church community, may the kingdom agenda prevail in 2021. May you bring about that which you want to be. Just as Isaiah prophesied to the people of Israel and he prophesied in a season where they're in distress, a season when they're in darkness. He began to prophesy them and speak of a bright and a beautiful future, a preferred future of which the Son of God would be revealed in it. Father, I pray that for every person, every heart and the sound of my voice, for this church community, may 2021 be a year in which you begin to reveal the bright future, in which you begin to move us from the distress we find ourselves in, the darkness that perhaps surrounds us, and move us into the bright future. Move us into the beautiful place that you want to lead us into, in order, Lord, that your word, that your, your promise may be fulfilled in and through us. So, Father, we thank you that you are mighty God, El Gabor, hero God. And may we know you working and moving in us, for us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
Well, another great morning. Thank you to Karen and those who prayed. And it's been good to worship and pray together. And thank you for Carl for sharing with us things about Almighty God that we might draw close to him and think of him at this time. And it will affect the way we live our lives. So as we move forward, we're continuing to work back towards having face to face meetings back at City Church. But we're determined to do this and keep it online in a sustainable way, which is why it's probably going to be a little while before we do that again, because for those who either don't want to or can't come to the building at this time when COVID is still going to be an issue, we want to be able to be there, a presence to connect with people online as well as in person. And there's some more work to do before we can keep that going. So please bear with us. We'll keep you posted about that and about a lot of other things in the weeks to come as we move forward into 2021. So a new year and a new hope to come. In the meantime, we'll be here again online next Sunday with uh, some worship and a message thinking about the new year. So look forward to joining with you then and wishing you all a very happy new year, a very healthy new year and all the best for that year to come. So God bless. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. In Jesus' name. Amen.